I wanted to ask you about the, the fake field goal play you ran in the game. And, and, and I thought, you know, first of all, it, which is what I would say if I were Gary Anderson, because I'm not about worrying about what other teams are doing. And, and he said, look, they're not running up the score. They're playing football. And that's so I don't think anybody felt that. But you guys had a lead third quarter, fourth quarter, and you run a fake field goal. Some people say, why show that now at sure. this point in the season? My answer was, I kind of like to show that stuff so other teams have to prepare for it. Was that the thinking, or is this a play that you kind of always have available and Doug Deacon saw the right keys and decided to go with it? Uh, no, I mean, two things. Number one, uh, you know, I remember a game last year where we had a lot of points on the board and didn't finish the game. And yeah, that's right. So, uh, you know, we, we have to as a program and have to as a university learn how to win and learn how to finish. And, you know, it, you know it, right or wrong or indifferent, uh, we're going we're going to play and we're going to have a demeanor in how we play and we're going to step on your throat and uh, try and take you out of the football game. And we had seen it. Uh, Dan Farino, our special teams coach, had, had gone over every PAT field goal block from last year and every one from this year. They had the same look all the time. And every week we have some sort of fake, uh, depending on what the other team gives us. And uh, we had sent Doug out there, and uh, we had it uh, the first two times early in the game and uh, told Doug it was red or blue check, red right, obviously, okay. blue going to the left. All right. So you can even figure that out. And uh, Well, I can figure the red right thing. The blue left blue, I don't get. That's okay. Maybe if lime was left, then I would the LL I'd okay, get that. okay, right? Yeah. Good thing I'm not your holder. Yeah, but uh, it was there, and uh, uh, Doug uh, ran it, and uh, we executed it, and, and that's what, uh, you know, you want to do. And so uh, the, uh, the other thing is now people will, will have to prepare for those kind of things. Yeah, and, and so what you're saying is, look, every game you go into, there's a fake field goal in there. Oh, there's a fake and punt and a fake field goal. It's in there, you. so, you know, be, and if defenses are going to sleep on it, then uh, you're going to run it. I, I agree with that. I mean, I'm just saying some people said, you know, why'd they show that? We should have saved that, you know, for later. Right, right. But, but I, 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 like, I like where you're coming from on that. Well, Brady, I've is. got uh, John sitting next to me, and uh, he's asked you questions, but I guess I got a question. And that is with uh, this previous game with uh, Utah and uh, running some spread offense like Air Force runs, do you think you've learned enough that you're going to be able to – Stop their spread offense with Air Force. Well, you know, uh, without getting ahead of ourselves, obviously some of the veer and some of the principles that Utah State had in their offense are, are similar to what uh, Air Force, but not the same. Uh, Air Force blocks at a whole different level. Uh, uh, the quickness of uh, their offensive line and, and running the tracks and all that kind of stuff is different. And, and uh, you know, I, I think, uh, well, I know, so, you know we had a, a very good plan a year ago against them. I think we held them to the, the, uh, the, the lowest level or the, the, one of the top two lowest levels of, of rushing than anybody the whole season. But uh, we'll, we'll probably tweak that a little bit, and Coach Long does a great job with it. But uh, there's no doubt that some of those uh, – uh, option principles, uh, uh, obviously the last two weeks, uh, not counting Missouri, but uh, with uh, New Mexico State, uh, we had a lot of the same things. All right, Air Force is the next home opponent uh, coming up uh, two weeks from Saturday on October the 16th. They're off to a good start. They're 2-0 and in the, in the conference. Utah's 2-0, uh, and, and you guys will be playing your first conference game next Saturday at BYU. All right, next up, Polly. Hi, Coach. I've uh, been a long-time San Diego football supporter. My dad was a coach. I'm also a coach. And very glad to see that you're out in the community recruiting locally finally because it's been a long time since San Diego State did that, especially with uh, Ryan Lindley, the quarterback. So I was just wondering what local weapons are you guys after right now as far as recruiting goes? Well, you know, there's a lot of guys uh, that we, we uh, have a high interest in and that uh, we've got some commitments already. I'm not allowed to talk uh, legally about all those things because the beautiful NCAA, but, uh, uh, you know, it's gone very well. And, uh, you know, the one thing that our coaches, you know, we want to be in every high school three times a year, whether they have a player or not, and, you know, extend ourselves, talk ball with coaches, try and help their programs, and, and uh, you know, we've got a staff that does a great job of that. 
Thank you very much for the question. How did you get Ryan Lindley to come from Alpine? Uh, like he was uh, well, before there, you got yeah, there. How yeah. did you? How did you kiss his parents? Or they're hanging out around here. Well, are, they, are they tough to deal with? It's uh, unbelievably <laughs> high maintenance with Tim. <laughs> Let's hear it for uh, Ryan Lindley's parents, ladies and gentlemen. I know they're mad that I that I'm uh, getting them a round of applause, but. They should be commended for for not only raising a hell of a nice quarterback, but a hell of a oh, hell of a, a great, a great, kid. great young man. And, and that's that's the truth. He gets that from his uncle. So. Uh, is that the deal? Okay, there we go. Thank you. I was trying to figure that out. All right. Uh, next question for the coach Brady Hoke here at Claim Jumper Aztec Coaches Show. Yes, sir, ma'am. All right, coach. Uh, hey. First of all, good job up to this point. We appreciate it. Yeah. Um, first of all, we see you know we're uh, you're running that three back system so far and. We were wondering if you're going to keep that going or uh, if you're going to maybe try to break it down to two backs or if you're going to be able to keep all those backs happy. Oh, you know what? Our guys, winning does unbelievable things, you know, for your attitude. And that's a great question. But, you know, there, there's enough carries to go around. Uh, Devon Brown is the guy who didn't get uh, many carries. Like he got one carry last week. But, uh, you know, with what they've done and – uh, you know, Walter and what he adds to our team with his toughness and, and it, the way when he does run the ball, they're, they're all different. And, and so it, it gives us a nice change of pace. Uh, the guy who really has been uh, selfless is uh, Brandon Sullivan. I mean, uh, you're talking about a guy who was a, a back and, you know, they believe me, they all have egos and they better have egos. And uh, they all want to carry the ball, but uh, he, he's done a great job of, of lead blocking and pass protecting and then, you know, throwing the ball to him out of the backfield. And, and I tell you, on our punt team, he's our, or he's our uh, fullback, and he's down the field making tackles uh, because a lot of people let that guy go. But when you have a guy who's that athletic and that tough, uh, uh, he's going to garner some attention. Brandon Sullivan has really done a – yeah, I mean, I'm just underscoring it for the, the, the people that are only looking at rushing statistics sure. because he's been there in the passing game, and he's probably helped you complete five or ten passes down the field this year right. by blocking, blitzing linebackers. Uh, he's the kind of guy a coach just loves. There's oh, no he, question about I, that. I'm really proud of him, and, and believe me, because uh, uh, he's come a long way when you look at a maturity and attitude and everything else and then what he's doing for our football team. Let me ask you real quick, and we got a couple more questions here at the Claim Jumper about uh, Ronnie Hillman and his running style. Ted and I were kind of kicking it around the other night. Uh, the bouncing outside that, he, that he's got the speed to be able to do, is that, is that something that as a running backs coach uh, and as offense, you're still trying to get him to learn and understand when to bounce it and when not to bounce it? Is that a hard thing? to teach a freshman running back? Well, you know, most running backs, um, you know, they've come with a vision. They've come with balance, and, and they have an, uh, an instinct about them, and especially good running backs. And, you know, I think at times you can overcoach a running back. And so there are certain things. I, I know um, the one touchdown, uh, the touchdown that he scored uh, the first time, uh, we ran the same play to the other side, the, the power play, and uh, – he kind of jumped twice instead of just hitting the one cut and, and driving it, and he did that on the second one. And I told him uh, on Monday when I saw him, I, I said, you know, Ronnie, that's, that's what you need to do, you know, and especially down there in, in that, uh, uh, black, that, that red zone area. You know, you got to get that yard. And he did a nice job. He, he, he put his pads down and, and just uh, uh, made a little bit out of not much. All right, so, uh, I mean, because he's got the ability, boy. He bounces outside. Sometimes it doesn't work, though, when you bounce outside. No, it doesn't, you but, know, and, and he's got a gear to him that's a little different. But, you know, we're, we're going to get in, uh, into the heat of our, or the meat of our schedule, and uh, there's going to be some guys who, who can match him when you look at speed. All right, uh, continuing on with Coach Brady Hoke and uh, questions from the, the claim jumper crowd here tonight. Yes, sir. I uh, just had a question about, like, your special team philosophy in uh -huh. terms of, like, the return game. It seems like with the kickoffs, um, at least from a distance, that you are leaning on the side of ball security rather than having that big, having a, you know, return for a touchdown or something like that. Um, and then under the kickoffs, you've ran through, I'm sorry, the punts, you've ran through three different returners. Right. Larry Parker got hurt, Leon McFadden, and right. then Nico this week. And so just... 
your philosophy and if during the bye week, if you're trying new people back there or why we haven't seen some of that big play on Well, the number one, our kickoff return has been really something that uh, uh, we're not real happy with. And, and we've worked uh, uh, hard on that part of the game, but we, we've got to look at some personnel, uh, and that's what we're doing uh, this week. Uh, maybe there's some guys who were asking to do things that – they can't do and well that's dumb coaching and that's not fair to them so we got to look at that part of it with the uh punt returners uh you know uh with larry down last week we were we were really two corners down you know romeo horn broke his foot uh and uh he's going to be out for a little bit and then with larry down so we really didn't want to put leon back there uh because we need him to play corner and uh uh, Nico, you know, is a sure-handed guy. He's done a great job. Um, uh, King Holder is a guy who we haven't used yet and may not use this year. Uh, you know, Zell Ruffin and, and uh, uh, Jay Waddell, all are guys that are, are pretty athletic back there. But, uh, you know, we, we, uh, Nico's a guy that uh, we're going to count on a little bit. And uh, when Larry gets healthy, it's either going to be Larry or Leon back there. Is it safe to – are there kickoff returns that are designed just to kind of get you out to the 30 as opposed to a kickoff return that's designed to go for a touchdown? Is there – or uh, a punt return? Or, uh, are there differences there at all? No, not really. Yeah. You know, we want them all to go to the house. Okay. You know? <laughs> I, I promise you. But uh, uh, we, we, we've, uh, you know, we, we've got to really look at what we're doing. I like what we're doing. Uh, part of uh, that team on kickoff returns – you know, I'm coaching the double team, and uh, I'm doing a crappy job because uh, we didn't get the double team once. So there's there's your blame right there. You just figured out why yeah, you're not seriously. doing the kickoff right and there. And it should be blame because it's uh, you know Andrew Preston really is playing uh, uh, good football for us at the Aztec position. He he uh, you know the coverage aspect of it is something that he's really had to work hard at and learn because he's on a slot sometimes and depending on what's going on. I thought Ernie Lawson uh, really made a difference in the football game. He was physical and, and he, he uh, we called chasing the rabbit, you know, and he was he was chasing the rabbit and uh, a guy who's really kind of helped us and shored us up a little guy a little bit is Neil Spencer inside and I thought those guys and. You know, you can't, you know, we talked about Abel, but uh, Brian Stahovich uh, punted the ball and has punted the ball awfully, awfully well. And uh, uh, that's that's uh, a, a good weapon for us. That's important uh, how we play the game. Isn't that nice to have that? Uh, I think he's got, what, seven, eight punts over 50 yards, and he's not really out kicking the coverage. I mean, he's hanging them right. up there so you guys can get down underneath them. I asked you about the offensive line last week, but – I'm just getting more and more impressed. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get extol their virtues too much because they still got eight more games that no, they got to no continue to to get better. But uh, with Trask kind of anchoring it in the middle, and and, and I, the guy I wanted to ask you about was Curtis Gunther because right. he was the one guy that was really came into this season without a, a lot of experience. Your right tackle, right? Uh, Peter Nelson started every game there last year, right? And, boy, you would think, okay, you know, first real action as a starter, you know, you might have a couple of, you know, times where, the, you know, he's going to get beat. Curtis Gunther's been nails over there, right tackle for you. And your two guards, I mean, they're easy to see because those two guys are both out in front pulling on almost every run and play. Well, you know, Curtis is a, really, uh, I'm proud of him. And uh, I'm proud of all the boys, believe me. But uh, uh, the way that uh, Curtis has developed the, he really took it as a challenge that, uh, you know, we were going to bring some junior college guys in, and, and uh, uh, when you do that, you're trying to get guys beat out. I mean, let's face it. And uh, I'll tell you, he's had a great attitude. He had a great uh, uh, spring starting there and a great summer, and he's gained uh, good weight and good strength, and uh, he, he's feisty. And I think as, as we go along, he'll get more confident and the better he'll play. Yeah, I really think, you know, for four games, if you ask me three and one, my unsung heroes are those five guys up yeah. front because they've really done a job for you. All right, let's hear it for the coach, Brady Hope.